Hello everybody and welcome back to another brand new video here on my channel. So in today's big video guys what we're going to be discussing and analysing is the complete menus, layout and details and every single setting available in Project Cars 2 from the menus. Uh, this was once revealed by Mr Steel Jockey over on YouTube a few days ago, I think it was July 13th. Um, so before uh, we do begin with this video, I'd like to thank him for, provide, for, for uh, providing the initial footage of these menu and settings as he, is, I believe he's a, an alpha, beta or a, a developer tester for the game. Uh, so go ahead and check him out for more Project Cars 2 videos and uh, a lot and lot of gameplay as well. Uh, obviously the work in progress builds um, as well as many other things involving the game. So there you go guys, his link will be down in the description. So we're going to go ahead and start off guys with the audio options. As you can see on screen guys we have uh, the options to change up or down the volume of any audio in the game. Uh, as you can see we've got the master volume, menu volume, player engine volume, opponent engine volume, general car volume, tyre volume, collision volume, truck, uh, track surface volume, uh, environment volume, sound effects volume, pit to car radio volume and the ability to change your headphone mix to on or off as well as setting your audio device down uh, the bottom there so all of these sounds here on this screen are obviously fully adjustable. The next one guys and quite a big one here is the gameplay. So we have authenticity, uh, you've got the option to have steering assistance as a yes or a no option, allowing for less experienced players to get a feel of the game before they go all out on no assist racing. Uh, same deal with braking assistance, giving the chance to those players who like to get used to a track or cars braking speeds uh, and force before trying out with any assists on. Um, the complete driving assists. Uh, consists of anti-lock brakes, stability control and traction control and putting this setting on authentic allows the anti-lock brakes to be low, stability control on and traction control on low. Putting this on full allows the anti-lock brakes to be low, stability control on and traction control on low and finally on this setting changing it to off allows the uh, anti-lock brakes to be off, stability control to be off and the traction control to be off. You can then change your damage type in game. You have the options to uh, off completely, visual only, performance impacting or full damage depending on your personal preference. Most of these settings here uh, you will be familiar with if you've played Project Cars 1 but however one of the new settings here is the uh, rules and penalties tab in which you can set it to obviously off or on and this punishes you for corner cutting or deliberate smashing into other races amongst many other penalties. You then got the uh, the manual pit stop option to turn your car on or off. This is the feature that a lot of you are very excited about as you are able to completely control your car during your pit stop and down the pit lane, keeping the correct speed and manoeuvring your vehicle into the pit stop for the changes to be made. It would be worth noting uh, some cars do have pit speed limiters so I would set those onto the cars which are available to place that feature on as it would make your pit um, pit lane entrance and exit a bit easier for yourself. Obviously it wouldn't be the race cars which uh, it would be the race cars sorry which have it and road cars uh, don't so you would need to control the speed yourself. Next one is the uh, pit stop cinematic cameras. So uh, where you're doing your pit uh, your pit through lane change and once you get to the pit stop box the camera pulls out and shows you the cinematic views of the pit stop as if, as if it was happening on TV or in replay mode. If you turn this option off then the pit stop camera will remain as your uh, chosen camera for the race whilst you wait for the pit stop to be concluded sat in the car. Then there is the manual cool down lap option and this is for people who uh, don't know is once enabled gives you the chance to drive one more lap around the track after the race is concluded instead of the AI immediately taking control of it once you cross the line. You have the option to completely control your car on this lap, weaving or speeding it's up to you all the way back to your correct pit box. The next screen here guys is a bit more on gameplay for on-screen guides and displays. You've then got the on-screen guide, uh, guides and displays which include the, uh, the hood level, driving lines, turn indicators, uh, track maps, lap information, starting grid lights, cockpit wheel and driver, opponent's names, race engineer, spotter, uh, proximity indicator, pit stop, visual cue, display units, chat box, chat profanity filter or tutorials. The new one is the spotter option which is only available during rallycross modes in the game. The spotter reads out where other cars are in relation to yourself on the track and makes suggestions about making moves on other opponents or taking your joke lap at a specific time. The proximity indicator is a tool which once enabled will allow you to have the little arrow icon on your screen near the bottom left of your uh, near the bottom of your vehicle sorry showing you if a vehicle is right up close to you and whereabouts they are coming from the left the right or the center right up your trumpet 
The pit stop visual cue is more than likely going to be enabled when first playing the game. This is because the option allows you to have a little marker or cue when driving down the pit lane on manual mode. This allows you to see which pit box is yours and not going into the wrong pit box by mistake. The next one guys is a bit of visual FX, uh, so here we have the visual FX for Project Cars 2. We have the option for post processing filters, exterior sun flare, interior sun flare, bloom, heat, gate, uh, heat haze, global specular uh, irradiance, exposure compensation, um, raindrops, uh, vignette, uh, crespular rays, screen dirt and cockpit mirrors on or off. Uh, then we've got the field of view. You're able to then change your camera settings on the field of view options. You can change the bumper, bonnet, roof, chase, cockpit or helmet cameras to your specific setup uh, or change the field of view speed sensitivity. On movement here guys we then have the option to change the movement of your cameras in game. Choosing from high speed shaking on or off, world movement, uh, g-force effects, showing the helmet, the depth of field of the helmet, the helmet looking to the apex of the corner when cornering, helmet leaning and camera leaning to return to a personal preference. In the controls tab guys we have the uh, control menu and we see you're able to fully configure your setup on wheel or gamepad allowing you to calib uh, calibrate your wheels and gamepads fully to maximise efficiency. Then on the configurations tab you have the option to set any dead zones for your chosen control to make these uh, controls a little bit easier for your liking. Uh, assignments tab guys next and this is where you can edit your assignments in the next few tabs. Changing things like your button mapping, cameras and field of view and other buttons need to be mapped can be mapped here too. Force feedback is next and now all people uh, have always been curious about what they're going to do with this option uh, which is obviously force feedback. Project Cards 1 was a very complicated system but Project Cards 2 has been simplified massively to allow for easy browsing. There are three th settings to choose from, uh, informative, immersive and raw. Along with a custom setting to allow you to change the settings yourself to match your preferences, you have the option to change the gain, volume, tone and FX options here. Uh, now if you're wondering what uh, each one does, the immersive option allows you to replicate the feel of road surfaces, curbs, tyre slip, weight and suspension movements felt through the steering wheel and as experienced in the real world. Informative option is designed to give more of a detailed feel of road surfaces, curbs, tyre slip and suspension uh, movements whilst the raw option is unfiltered force feedback allowing you to feel the full strength of various forces felt by the drivers. The next one is the performance tabs and this is now moving on to the performance tabs obviously on project on on, a, on PC sorry but Xbox will near enough have all of these options so don't worry about that too much. You can set your resolution and choose whether the screen is windowed or not. Then you have the options of texture resolution, texture filtering, vsync, msaa, post anti-analyzing, uh, super sampling, reflections, environment map, car details, track details, pit crew details, shadow details, enhanced mirrors or motion blur can all be altered to your PC's performance. The next one guys we have is the uh, bit of career. Now obviously we can't go too much into it because there's not enough um, stuff actually been created yet uh, in the builds so this is the only thing we're getting so far on the look of career mode and obviously on the screen you can see this is the career page where you can select to start a new career, continue a saved game career mode or manage your driver's careers. When starting your career you have the ability to name your driver and nationality before heading off and diving into the mode. During the quick play mode here guys, uh, then this is the uh, in the quick play options we have the custom race, browsing online, private testing or creating an online event sections. In the create your own online custom event page you have the option to change uh, the vehicle selections, track selections, race settings and session settings. In the host settings you can change items such as the lobby name to ensure your friends or gamers can easily find your lobby. Enter a password if needed and if you want it to be exclusive members entering. You have the option to change the lobby privacy to public or private as well as selecting this awesome option to broadcast your race which will record the race like it's in showed on TV or a complete replay. Obviously with a load of um, overlays as well on top of the screen. Into the realism setting guys, now within this lobby menus there are uh, realism settings to choose from. You have the control of whether the race has allowed auto start engines, force interior views, force driving lines to be turned off, force default settings so no tuning, uh, force manual gears for everyone, force the realistic driving aids, allow anti-lock brakes, allow traction control and allow stability control, having collisions on or off, damage types, mechanical failures, allowing ghosted vehicles, force uh, manual pit stops, pit stop errors, tyre wear, fuel depletion so you can run out of fuel if you don't pit stop during the race and the forced cooldown lap as described earlier in this video.
The next one, guys, is opponent uh, opponent settings. So you can also set your opponent settings for a maximum grid size, uh, maximum human opponents, the option to fill the space with AI drivers, and changing their skill levels from beginner to ace on a scale of 1 to 100, just like Project Cars 1. However, this is the new part, and you can also change the opponent aggression to alter which type of driving suits the AI from 1 to 100 also, along with the option to change the field type of the opponent, which changes what kind of vehicles the opponents are driving. They are, are uh, identical, same class, multi-class, uh, or multi-class options on this setting, allowing for a different kind of racing opponents. The final few here, guys, we've got rules and regulations. So you can change the rules and penalties to apply to the races, along with track limiting penalties, allowing time penalties, drive-through penalties on or off, pit exit penalties for going over the white lines on exit, having a minimum competitive racing license acquired through the career mode, and choosing for a minimum requirement for these licenses. Then we've got online race settings. So here you have the options to change many different factors about your online race. You have the options here to change the duration of the race or change it to laps to change the race to a lapped number. You can change the date of the race to any date in the year, altering the time of date and time progression uh, of the race from real time all the way to times two speed or times 50 speed or turn it off completely. You then can change your season from summer, winter, spring or autumn and there is also a snow season to choose from for those who dare to venture into the white mist. The snow option only comes up depending on the tracks because for example you are not going to have the option for snow on the Dubai circuit but you will have on the Silverstone circuit in winter for example. You then have the options for changing the weather forecast by selecting up to four weather slots. These slots are what weather will be constantly adapting and changing into during the race. So you could select light cloud, medium cloud, heavy cloud, heavy rain for example. You then have the weather progression setting to alter, setting uh, to real time, or changing the speed of the weather two times to 50 times, same as the time progression system. Surprisingly, you can change the lapped race settings to 999 laps just in case you have no social life whatsoever and fancy a challenge. You have the option for a rolling start, formation laps and mandatory pit stops during the race. Final two here guys, we've got the uh, session settings where you can uh, set your races to have practice and qualifying sessions to act like a real racing weekend with session start times and duration toggles for each of these. Now obviously for the qualifying and for the practice you can change the different kinds of weather and different kinds of um, times or laps you want to uh, do on those sessions so it won't last too long if you don't want it to. And finally guys, motorsport presets, you have the option to select different preset uh, settings for each motorsport, which is a very nice feature if you don't want to go through all the hassle of uh, changing all the settings, simply choose from rallycross, indycar, gt, endurance, carts, open wheeler, touring cars, track days or road cars to get a preset set up for the race, that motorsport discipline. So that's all the information I have for you in today's video guys. It is quite a long video. I do hopefully you stay with me through the end. Uh, obviously if you are watching this let me know down in the comments down below if you're watching it right now and made it to the end and uh, let me know what you're most looking forward to in Project Cards 2. Uh, I will be giving you more information on this menu screen uh, hopefully very soon as well as some new gameplay that has been revealed as well so stay tuned for that. But anyway guys that is it for me in today's video. I did hope you enjoyed it and if you did please like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you ever in my next video, guys. So I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.